very kind always, especially to me. Uh, but good to see you uh, here in the morning today. Now we have a eminent panelist today, uh, as Dr. Patra rightly said, that uh, CFO is, the CFO's role is not really uh, limited to look after the financial prudence of the company, but it also goes beyond to, to look after strategy, more futuristic view uh, perspective in terms of how uh, they are yielding the best test result for any uh, organization. Uh, as many as 94% of Indian CFOs have showed confidence in India's future economic scenario. But the reality is, because of the economic turbulence, uh, the global macro trends, it actually is shaking up India's macro sentiment. Uh, not only in, at the beginning of today, this year, uh, we have been seeing the financial system turbulent. We have been seeing the roadblocks one after the other in the last two to three years. Uh, in this panel, we would want to uh, discuss how going forward we will kind of navigate through this and how are you seeing consumers adjusting to this dynamic market? Uh, anybody would like to start? Uh, when last year the rates were really high and people couldn't kind of uh, keep the pace to it, uh, how are you looking at consumers adjusting to it? Is it becoming a new normal? Or how are you navigating through it? Rabin, if you want to start. Thank you. Uh, thank you, BW. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Rezwan. And I understand, like you said, that uh, that uh, the, it's a primarily the consumer behavior kind of a thing. And you said that that consumer are resisting. But there is a catch here. We have seen that number of the consumer spending with vis-a-vis -vis the tax collection because uh, there are few parameter by which you can uh, gauge what is the how the our economy is performing how the consumer is spending is there. So GST collection is one of the barometer, we can say that in the parameter. So we have seen that the GST collection is growing. So that, that is the one indicator. The consumer behavior is, is more into spending vis-a-vis. -vis. The other parameter is that uh, personal loan. Personal loan books are also increasing. So that means people is spending is the vis-a-vis -vis that people are going uh, to uh, take borrowing and they are spending. So it's a sign of hey, that American economy where people just borrow and then spend. So those kind of a uh, indication that we are getting kind of a thing. And uh, regarding that, and second aspect is the innovation kind of a thing. When the product evolution is happening, the new products are coming. So Indian consumer and Indian market sentiments is also going for a try and test that the, whenever we have seen that the, when Apple launch a new product, so there is a queue to get the new model of uh, Apple i15, 16 and whatever new model. There is a new car is launching. So there is a huge waiting list. So that means that consumer behavior is more towards the new product. They are adopting and accepting the innovation into the product line. So those kind of a thing is a indicator that uh, people are accepting the innovation despite that the income restriction is there, but they are adopting the innovation. See, I think uh, interest rates don't have too much of a bearing on consumption. You got to realize we are a country of 1.42 billion people. Now what is happening is business models are getting disrupted. On an average, a company used to spend at least 18 years in the Fortune 50. Sorry, it used to spend at least 40 years in a Fortune 50. Now it's come down to 18. You know, the largest market cap now is NVIDIA. And this company didn't exist in 2000. So what is happening is the business models are getting disrupted at a very, very fast pace. Competition in India is cutthroat. So if you don't have a good handle on your financials, on your cash flow, on whether the product is nearing its end of life, then you'll be kicked out. So I wouldn't agree that uh, there is an issue broadly. In pockets, it will exist. And uh, one of the aspects I like to share is, in the last annual general meeting of uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, somebody asked a question of Warren Buffet as to India as a land of uh, opportunities. Why don't uh, you all have any investments in India? 
And uh, do you know what the answer was? So the answer was, yes, India is the future. I will have to have an energetic management to invest in India. So I think uh, this is a land of billion opportunities. Opportunities will come. You need to take some risks. You need to take some risks. Business models have to be very, very current. You need to kind of support, like what he said, buy now, pay, pay later, BNPL economy. And lastly, I would say, look at your own data. It tells you what your future is. So as CFO, it's my job to convert number into a story and a story into a number. So that's what I'll say. I don't think there is a major issue in pockets. There is, but uh, we'll be fine. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, B, uh, BW. Uh, my uh, take on this is that, of course, adding to what uh, Prabeen and Samit just mentioned, we are certainly in a very turbulent economy these days, and uh, it's going to continue. It's going to be disruptive. We all need to be agile. Our products need to be in tune with the customer expectations. And we as CFOs have to cater to that kind of a management requirement uh, in, and with, with the data in our hand. So it's very important that we are very much in tune with the business, with the customers, with the consumers, and see how the market is growing and going. So that's, that's our role and uh, well, uh, that's, uh, and that's how, you know, in the last few years where uh, we've had multiple panel discussions talking primarily on the changing role of CFOs. Yes, CFO is not merely an accountant. Of course, the accounts, the data is the oil uh, for us to keep the machinery running. But at the same time, it's very, very close to be close to, uh, to be hand in hand with the business uh, in terms of growth, innovation, evolution, etc. Well said. Now, some of you mentioned about disruption in business uh, models, business strategies. I would want you to kind of discuss how you are looking at, re-looking at your strategies when it comes to financial prudence. Now, uh, every company all across the uh, departments, all across the industries have aspirations to go higher on their growth graph, right? And you as custodians of uh, their financial systems, their money, their accountants. Uh, how would you balance frugality and growth? Uh, in this era of disruption, we would absolutely need strategies which, are, which is new, uh, new age, which are, which are kind of most efficient in these uh, turbulent times. What are some of the strategies you are working with right now in order to balance growth and frugality? Uh, thank you. I think uh, that uh, Mr. Batra has said that CFOs are the future, it's the chief future risk officer and chief future officer. So as a CFO, one has to see that they have to predict, calculative prediction they have to need to do that what kind of a growth path they are going and what kind of a risk is associated. So they need to balance the both the thing and here CFO has to play the role of Krishna I am taking the uh, quote from Mahabharata they have to play the role of a Krishna your CEO and other people they will be on the front and they will be uh, getting the sales done and other things as Arjuna as a Vima and other people but you have to control you have to balance though you have to look the winning target but you have to balance the things. You have to have the brake and accelerator, both the things together. The growth, whenever you see the growth, put the accelerator. But if you see that any turbulence, any disruption, any risk is, so you, at the same time, you have to put the brake as well. So the role of CFO is in this context is very vital. He has to play a dual kind of a things and make the, the particularly the finance team. Finance team is generally and everywhere the finance team is handling the money. So who knows better the health of the company better than the CFO and the finance folks. They know that how much is the outstanding they, they are in the books and how much is the creditor in the books. So they have to balance how much is the cash flow is predicted to come. There is not necessary that sales is happening but the money is not coming. So again, here there is a cash flow risk. So CFO has to balance that again. See, 
guys do the sales but take the financial uh, that finance inflow also taking take into cognizance so those kind of a very dynamic role here cfo has to play and he has to play the dual role that i said that like krishna he has to play the thing. i got that that was a pretty broader point samir if you would like to kind of uh, lay emphasis precisely on uh, strategy also from a leadership perspective you as a cfo of the company from your leadership lens how you're looking at strategies that are uh, in favor of company's bestest uh, results or growth see there is nobody better than a finance person to you know kind of know what's happening in your company in your competition in your country and geopolitics so as a finance guy <clears throat> when i'm devising a strategy it's my duty not only to kind of put it into numbers but also work with all my peers and stakeholders to make sure that's well understood by the entire sort of stakeholders within the company outside and within the company to make sure that there is a proper reward structure in place whenever i come up with a new strategy the only way it's going to work is if it gets implemented all across and the reality is it will get implemented only if there is an element of a balanced scorecard in your incentive compensation so when i have to come up with a new strategy for example to incentivize a new product line i will tweak the quota compensation and credit policy so for that i'll have to work with hr i'll have to work with my sales guy if i see that my product line is coming up for its end of life i have to come up with a new policy or a new product then again i'll have to work with my sales guy to get in the information from the end customer speak with my r and d guys speak with my production guys so as a finance guy i have to ensure that i'm speaking more to folks outside of finance than within finance trying to calibrate and make some sense out of the data and then go back to the boardroom and draw up a strategy and ultimately ensuring that everybody buys in and the best example i think i just gave you is to make sure that the incentive compensation on the variable side is in line with your future plan unless you do that somebody else will come and eat your lunch the competition in india is indeed cutthroat it is a funny economy where it's very price sensitive there is a 1.4 billion population yet to do business is not easy having said that if you run your company as a well oiled machine so we are the oil in the company's manufacturing setup so two points if i can uh, summarize this into one is you will need to work with your peers very closely in terms of uh, culminating a, a, if an efficient Growing strategy up and, and also yeah and also secondly uh, you would you would try your best in order to uh, bring out the best returns and rewards for each stakeholders all across correct. the company correct yeah? uh now uh you you mentioned that cfo is the bestest person to know every corner of the company be it data analytics uh, their uh, behaviors inside the companies or the consumers now superna if you want to uh, talk about how are you investing in technology if we can talk about because with these in advanced technologies cfos can really co-pilot the uh, the financial uh, procedures the the financial uh department all together they're doing mundane tasks but what beyond that how are you investing in technology to kind of bring out the best uh from the cfo and also the its team a uh, very pertinent question we as cfos we actually have to pay, play a balanced role sometimes a dual role and when i say that uh if i say a dual role of course the uh, the normal finance functions uh the people in the finance department have to keep on supporting the business as usual but parallelly the intelligence of the finance department or the intelligence uh you know or the strategy uh, part of the finance function or the cfo's function is to look at innovation and innovative technologies to support business as well as bring in a uh, a better value addition from the finance function Uh, uh in parallel while business is going on as usual uh we have uh, 
a lot to learn in terms of uh, what the business has to offer, uh, where the business, is, like all the, the complete nook and corners of the um, uh, business, the organization is something which the CFO really needs to have complete visibility. So if we say that, uh, you know, if it's uh, the business, suppose it's a channel driven business, and it has, it's a service driven business, the channel partners, the distribution, the service wing of the, of the, uh, uh, of the organization. So all these things put together is something, you know, which uh, drives the business. And now coming back to the finance function, uh, whenever we think of the future, the future market, uh, things the way, the way the consumer preferences are changing, we always need to keep that in mind while we are looking at the finance function of the organization. Uh, innovation in terms of technology, uh, which probably uh, the main thing which always comes to our mind is the uh, business analytics part, the data part, and how we can use that data to support business, how we can use marketing data to help business plan for the future, the growth, the strategy, the increase in market share. So all these things require a lot of innovative ideas from finance department. Uh, and when we talk of this innovative ideas from the finance department, it also comes to the use of technology. Things, the, the market is changing so fast uh, any innovation, if it is slow, then ov obviously it becomes a failure. It's very important for us to have those innovative ideas put into place very fast, faster than the, the way the market changes, so that we are ahead of competition. And using different kinds of technologies available in the market is something that we need to pick and choose, customize, and deliver in time to help the business. So that's how I will say that the um, innovation and technology can be used in the finance function to help and grow the business. Good to know, Suparna. Prabhin, if you would like to kind of share examples, how are you investing in technology at your organization? See, <laughs> And also your observation, how AI or advanced technology is kind of helping the uh, CFOs. Hmm. See, technology is the future. I mean, uh, like my co-panelist and other people have said, and we know that the, without technology, you can't move uh, ahead. Like, uh, we have, as a consumer, as a CFO, everybody is in a day-to-day -day, uh, activity. We are all, all know that in, through our hand, handset, we are doing a lot of business. We are doing the share trading. We are doing the bank account. We are... Uh, ordering the food and wh whatever, e-com business and everything. So all this has happened due to technology. Technology has like uh, uh, stopped the border transactions. I mean, it, it become the borderless. You can do the business pan India sitting here. You can send, uh, you can list your product in Amazon and uh, send the product in uh, US and everywhere. So it's a, it's a borderless economy, the flat economy, you can say that the world is flat kind of a thing. So it all this happened with the help of technology. And any future progressive things, if you do that, without the help of technology, you can't expand. If it is, uh, you are a standalone business, so you can grow in a uh, GP ratio kind of a thing in an AP, like one, two, three. But if you want to expand in a GP kind of a thing, so in a progressive method, so then you have to adopt the technology. And innovation, and then invest into the technology. Like nobody wants to be a uh, Kodak kind of a thing. They didn't invest in the technology and we know that the story of Kodak. So likewise, these are days everybody is talking about the AI, ML and everything. So going forward, the futuristic, uh, innovation and the futuristic things are coming into the artificial intelligence and the machine learning kind of a thing where the our day-to-day -day mundane task the process and other thing is run into the that platform even uh, in other places that uh, in Europe and other places the AI is playing a big role in US in uh, different maybe they are in a health sector they are very prominent they because in the, uh, they, with the help of data, they can diagnose what kind of a uh, 
that innovation is required into the medical science, in the surgery and, and, and other things, which was earlier not possible. So those kind of innovation and the help of AI and ML, the every sector is doing a growth business. And as a CFO, when you have a plenty of a, uh, data, you can predict the business growth, you can plan in a better way, you can plan the cash flow, that how uh, my cash flow is going to happen. So the, the profitability and other things you can predict and the risk will be better taken. See, my take on technology is that IT stroke technology and finance are two sides of the same coin. As the finance head of my company, I drive the IT guys to get on-demand business reporting to everybody. They should not be waiting for an email. They should be able to log on to HANA or whatever is your platform to get the report, analyze that. In fact, unless and until you have technology doing most of the legwork, you will not be able to act in a manner in which you're supposed to. Take the example of uh, looking at your numbers with that of the competition or what you guided for that quarter. These days, all the analysts which are covering your stock are able to come out with their recommendation within three to four hours the moment you announce your results. There are softwares available, not so much in India, but if you go to US and Europe, they're able to come out with all the numbers within three hours. In my company, we have not only dashboards for uh, you know, the business results and how they're doing vis-a-vis -vis what they were supposed to, but I created a new dashboard as to which leader is not accessing HANA. So I have to lead by example. The, the days where somebody else will give you a report and you will do the analysis are all gone. So as a finance leader, I take it on me to lead by example. And if you do that, your entire team and the entire company follows. I think unless and until you're reading your numbers almost on a real-time online basis, comparing it with not only the competition, but also what you're going to guide, it starts from day one of the current quarter. You can't say when the quarter will finish, I will decide what guidance I will give. The business models, as I said in my opening remark, are changing so fast. You just don't know what will happen. And the best example of how a company can use technology is Asian Paints. You know, do the research on the net. For two consecutive years, SAP gave them the best implemented award. The kind of data they turn out of the demand of the paint, which color having a negative cash flow. And the second one I'll say is Indigo. I mean, the way they forecast their you know, passenger load factors, you know, the, the sheer population of those customers which book on their own website and their own internal uh, you know, uh, ways and means to kind of uh, promote that than going through an aggregator which is costly. So data is everything, technology is everything. Use it, make sure people use it and lead by example. Lovely, very impressive. Uh, now, CFOs are the people in the C-suit uh, who are feared by all, obviously after CEOs, but uh, be aware that they are looking, for, looking and uh, knowing every inch of your performance and how are you contributing to the quarter growth or yearly growth whatsoever. Now, uh, in the last two to three years or four years, CFOs, uh, I mean, more than CEOs, it was CFOs who were looked at be it about maintaining top line, bottom line, be it navigating through economic uh, uh, fluctuations, be it about how, how are you generating revenues, so on and so forth. But when it comes to assessing a risk or uh, a potential, uh, potential uh, what should I say, the potential uh, growth, growth, uh, potential growth, you are, you are somebody who is more aware about the probable result or a risk, right? Now, do you believe when you sit with the CEO, you have the power of having a bias against a bet? When you know that this, this decision can lead to a good or a bad result, do you believe that you are equipped enough with the authority to change the, uh, the final decision in order to uh, get the best test results. How do you look at it? See, very, very. Uh, I mean, 
pertinent thing and everybody face this thing on our day to day uh, activities and as a cfo it's a challenging and cfos are saying has to play the role of a, a good doctor when you know the health of your company when you know that what action will i mean have a positive impact or a negative impact when somebody has taken a decision like say your ceo has taken a decision no we have to invest say some 100 crore rupees on establishing a new plant and other things and you saw that uh, and as a cfo you are coming to know that that uh, the gestation period of the plant or new investment is 5 years 4 years the cash flow is not positive the lending cost will burn your profit line the share prices the market cap of the share will fall down so maybe you can uh, you can as a cfo put through your thought with uh, some data with some number and with uh, some logical conclusion and showing the future showing the the future because cfos can predict the things with the help of data and with their inner guts in the financial number and that's a more valued that giving a financial number with the base on data you can put your words and thought before this uh, the ceo and other stakeholder maybe if there is a disagreement with the ceo there could be a other investment committee where without uh, any disagreement you can show the number and keep it to the the highest authority to take a call on it because as a cfo you has to take care of the other stakeholder you have to take care of the company and the main uh, purpose of cfo is the value creation for the stakeholder either it's a shareholder it's a board or anybody so cfo has to take the balance view assessing the risk and assessing the future growth i'm expecting something different from samir but before i come to you suparna okay so uh, just to add to what praveen mentioned it is definitely a day to day uh, you know situation that we all face but for me when a person reaches uh, a cfo position in the company it comes with ability it comes with efficiency it comes with years of uh, experience which certainly gives some thing called a conviction in a cfo there is data to support there is market to see there is the organization philosophy the organization strategy or the vision that that the cfo would know very well so striking the right balance with the own ability of the cfo and a strong conviction to have the management accept or accept something which has come from the cfo in terms of uh, investment in technology in, in investment uh, in uh, innovation etc uh, i will see that that's something which the cfo uh, beyond uh, beyond the numbers or beyond uh, beyond what it gives you it's the cfo's own conviction in something which has to which the cfo needs to take forward so this kind of stands over and above everything that it has given you that your systems have given you uh, the data or the numbers have given you so uh, my um, uh, my take on this is that every cfo has to have that ability to have that strong conviction to see uh, in whatever he or she does so i would put it that i kind way. of agree that uh, you have numbers to show you have markets results and a lot of reports to show and kind of uh, validate your uh, reasoning to the decision but uh, in reality how how equipped are you to give away your bold bet uh, i mean it can be biased bet but uh, how equipped or how powerful are you for a bold decision see my take on this is <clears throat> so first of all you know i stayed in china for about 2 years in the late 90s and if you know their uh, language is pictographic it's not on a script and if you see how they write the word risk it's danger and opportunity so for many words i go back to the chinese way of how they write it and it's a danger and opportunity <coughs> so i think suparna put it very well <coughs> that numbers and data is one thing but your gut feel is the other and i think there should never be a discussion where everybody agrees you know when you get into a board room 
unless and until there is somebody who has at least a skeptical view of it, I think it's not worth it. Now, obviously you sit down, you discuss and you agree. But I think how you implement it, I talked about it earlier as well, that whatever is our reward, which is our variable compensation, should be dependent on a common theme. That is where I think we work together as a team, we talk the same language, we help each other. Because if the sales guy is compensated on something else than what I am, then there will be strife. So the sales guy should equally be having DSO, which is the daily sales outstanding, as one of the parameters, maybe a small percentage, and I may have a higher percentage. Similarly, I need to have a top line as a parameter. So good organizations, especially those who live in a disruptive world, at every level have common parameters, have a balanced scorecard in their annual or quarterly appraisals, which help the organization, you know, not only kind of uh, implement it, but implement it with a lot of speed. And lastly, I will say, that the watertight compartments that I am a CFO and he's a CFO and that guy is a sales guy and that guy is a HR guy and that guy is a production guy are all gone. Good companies rotate people in completely different uh, functions. In completely different functions. So the, the, the lady who used to head HR till very recently where I work was uh, a finance person earlier. My outgoing CEO was a finance guy. So the more we rotate and we kind of realize what's going on in their world, as I said, understand what the other guy is facing, together we can solve it. And I have never seen an investment decision which was very difficult to take. We put down all our thought processes, our gut feels, and as and when you express skepticism on one aspect of that, it could be a, you know, a higher interest portion, you know, lower cash burn, higher cash burn, you draw up a strategy and we work together. I'm sure. Well, you have put, Samir. Uh, in final 30 seconds, I would want a rapid fire, quick answer from all three of you. There was a report which uh, uh, came, out three, came out with three priorities for a CFO. One is revenue generation, cost control, and productivity improvement. What could be one priority you would add to a CFO's role in today's disruptive time. One quick priority you would add to your role. Manage the top line and bottom line both. Samir? Get a wonderful team. Everything else will happen only if you have a good team. You don't know all the answers. Get a team which tells you the truth and not uh, all the things you want to hear. This is sounding like coming from an HR leader. <laughs> so every manager is an HR, I mean just to add to what Sami said and your comment, uh, let's all remember every team leader is first an HR person and then the functional person because you need to motivate the team and get, get going with the organizational deliverables. Now from my side, um, my take as the CFO is that um, and the advice to uh, aspiring CFOs is that please be close to business. If you're sitting in your own silos on your Excel sheets and PowerPoints, you're never going to get there. So please be close to business, visit customers, um, uh, do the legwork with your salespeople, and that's the only way for your growth. Undoubtedly, they are not only few chief financial officer, they are absolutely chief future officers. Uh, thank you so much. It has been a wonderful discussion. I am taking away a lot of insights. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Aditya.